if there's one universal thing you need to do in post-processing, you need to sharpen your photos. Today, we're going to take a look at a product called Topaz Sharpen AI. It's from Topaz Labs, and as you can guess from the name, it's a program to help you sharpen your photos. The interesting thing about it is we're seeing a lot of software with the words AI or artificial intelligence involved. This one is no different, and I think we're going to be able to see how the AI applies inside of this program. So let's take a look at, this is my review of Topaz Sharpen AI. Hi, my name is William Beam. I'm a photographer in Central Florida. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. Welcome back. I really appreciate you. I just want to let you know that I've got a lot of videos here. If you like products like Luminar AI, we're going to be doing a series on Topaz Labs and some on Lightroom and some on photography in general. So please, if you would, if you like what you see here, go ahead, click the subscribe button. And that way you'll get a chance to see future videos. Click the little notification bell icon. And why don't we go ahead and get started. We'll take a look at a few photos and how we're going to process them in Topaz Sharpen AI. All right, we're in Topaz Sharpen AI. You can see that it's version 2.2.4 as of the time I record this. And let me just give you a quick little look. Over at the top, you can see an interface where you can kind of zoom in and out of your photos. You can zoom to fit. There's some presets you can use, or you can just use this little slider to move over. This one will toggle between the original image and the sharpened image that it's generated. It does take a little bit of time to generate a preview, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And of course, here are the view. You can look at it as a single view. You can do a split view, so that way you can kind of scroll side to side between what's sharpened and what's not. This image isn't sharpened right now. And you can do a side-by-side -side view, and you can also do a comparison view. So there's your originals. And the reason you have these four modes here is because you can do sharpen, focus, or stabilize. And you see where it says not updated. It means I haven't generated a preview. I have auto update preview turned off. And that's quite honestly because this is a very resource intensive application and I'm running an older Mac. Mine is a 2014 iMac. I don't have a discrete GPU in here. And it takes time to run these updates. I can sit here for a minute waiting for it to update one of my files. This is from a 36 megapixel raw file. And it's just going to take a little bit of time. If you have a newer machine, it'll run much faster. I've seen this running on other machines and it does better. If you have a discrete GPU, that will also help. The program is, like I said, it's very resource intensive. It's hitting the CPU, it's hitting your GPU. And that way, if you turn this off, you can simply update when you want to. But before we do that, let's go down and take a look at the AI modes. There are two of them here that where the AI really helps you out. One is choosing the mode. You have a sharpen mode, a stabilize mode, and a focus mode. And if you don't know which one is best for you, you can update them all at once. And this view that we're looking at will show you the difference. Sometimes you simply just have a good shot, but it needs a little bit of sharpening. And quite honestly, every photograph needs sharpening. A JPEG gets sharpened in camera because a JPEG is actually processing the image that you captured into a final result. Your raw file is really just a database. So it's captured the image, but it hasn't been turned into anything graphical yet. And that's why you need sharpening. So you may need something where you've missed focus. You may need something because there was movement. Like in this case, I have a woman who's jumping in the air and maybe you need to stabilize the image or maybe you just need sharpening because as I said, all photos need sharpening. Once you get down beneath that, you have these settings, sharpness, noise suppression, and there's even a toggle switch here for extra noise, extra noise suppression, and then you can add grain. So if I hover over the auto mode, you can see where it says automatically detect recommended model for this image, disabled in comparison view. So that's why we're not seeing here. If I go back and change the view. Let's go back to single view and we'll turn on auto mode and you can see it's selected focus. And we also have auto on the settings. It's selected these settings. If I want to see what it looks like, since I have the auto update turned off, I just go ahead and I click update. It'll start generating a preview and I'll go ahead and I'll cut through to the end because like I said, on my computer, it's going to take a little while. All right, now that we're done, let's go ahead and take a look at our before and after. So you can see her face over here. And you can see some of the detail on her dress. I'm going to go ahead and click the original. And you can see that it's just out of focus. And from a distance, maybe you might be all right. But quite honestly, you want to get your photo as sharp as you can. And then now we've got eyelashes. We've got details in the eye. We can see a bit more of her necklace and the dress. So if I'm going to go 
This is before, and this is after. And I'll do it once more. So this is before, and this is after. And it's kind of a subtle change. If you want to get more sharpness, you don't have to stay in auto mode. You can turn this off. We'll go over here and just arbitrarily we'll click this. But then you have to go through another update cycle in order to see the results. So I'm going to go ahead and update once again. Matter of fact, I'm going to do one thing before that. In order to get the processing faster, you can zoom in more. So if we zoom in to 200%, the processing is going to work much faster than it does at full resolution of the photograph or even at 100%. So let's go ahead and click update at 200%. Okay, so we've completed that. We've zoomed in. Let's go take a look at our before. You can see that it's quite blurry there. And after, we've got a bit more detail on this. Is it perfect? No. It, I mean, the let's face it, the photograph capture, she was in motion and just simply there was some blurriness in it. And I would say that it is much better. And keep in mind, we're zoomed in at 200%. Most people aren't going to look at your photograph this way. If you can see over here in the thumbnail, this is a person leaping up in the air. I don't think you have to have absolute sharpness in every detail in order to have a good photograph if you're looking at this size. When you zoomed at 200%, you're looking at something in a way that no one else is going to. I can see eyelashes. I can see the earrings. I can see you know, detail on the dress and on the necklace. I think that does actually a very good job. And before, we were really very soft on this image. So I think that it's done a really good job, particularly if you take a look over here in her hair. So this is sharpened, so this is before, and you can see that's very, very soft. And now we've got detail on the hair. So I think, keep in mind we're zoomed in at 200%, and it does a really good job that way. Something else to take a look at is down here on the bottom bar, you see this little icon over here for mask. You don't have to sharpen the entire photograph. You can selectively sharpen your image. So we can go ahead and click mask, and that does a few things for us. You notice that it said detecting objects. If you come over here where it says find objects, it determined this is a person. So we go ahead, click that, and it automatically generates a mask for us. Maybe not a perfect one, but you can see the mask down here in this lower icon, and we've got a mask all over. So if you want to add to it, down here in the lower left, you can see where it says sub in case you want to subtract or add, which is the default mode. There's also an edge aware option here. And then you can change the size of your brush. Let's say that we just want to add in part of her arm over here. And this kind of comes in handy when you're working with a subject that maybe should be in focus, but you don't want your background or other parts of the image to be in focus. So that way you don't try to sharpen things that maybe should be defocused, out of focus, you know, bokeh in the background. And this way you're only applying the sharpening where you need it. Once you have the, your mask the way you want it, you click over here to update the mask. And then now you can go ahead and make any changes you want to, and it'll only affect that area of where you mask. Let's go ahead and take a look at another photo. I'm going to click the X down here to close this one out, and I'm not going to save any changes. Okay, we have a very different image here. This is, of course, in the United States Capitol building. That's the backside of George Washington statue and the Capitol Dome. So let's go ahead and see what happens. On this one, you can tell that the automatic mode already selected stabilize rather than sharpen or focus. And let's go ahead and click the auto settings down here. It's determined what it wants for sharpness and noise suppression. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit update. All right, and we're done. So let's go ahead and take a look at, this is our before. And this is our after. And I'm looking right over here, kind of on the ponytail and the bow of this statue. And you can see really a change right in there. That's actually a bit soft, and it's done a really good job of sharpening. And it hasn't over-sharpened it. That's one of the things I like about the AI. You want things to be sharp. You don't want them to be crunchy. And it does a very good job, actually, of determining the right amount. If you want to do it yourself, you can take this all the way over to 100%. I'm actually going to zoom in to 200% to save a little bit of time. And I'm going to scroll this down so we can see. So let's go ahead and take an update on this. Okay, so we can see that actually we've got a really nice sharp image here. Let me show you the before. And you can see how soft that is. And the detail just really pops out. Now, 
to me, that's too much detail because you see what it's doing up here on these tiles in the Capitol Dome. I look at before, they are rather soft. Now they've kind of gotten crunchy. So you could decide maybe you want to mask this one out. So we'll come down here and click on mask. And it actually finds the statue as a person. And you could go ahead and clean this up as far as how you want to. It's not a perfect mask by any means. And I think that's because this is, you know, obviously a statue rather than an actual person. But the idea is that you can go ahead and determine which parts of the image deserve to have some sharpening on them and w then ignore the rest of it. And I think doing it that way is probably going to give us a better result. Sharpening everything is typically not the way I would sharpen inside of any tool. So once you've got done with your mask, come down here to the bottom. You'll see this part where it says apply mask. So I'm going to click that. So there's our original and there's the sharpening. You notice the differences now that we've applied that mask. We don't have the same kind of sharpness or crunchiness going on these tiles up here or the background. They should be out of focus because it draws more attention to our subject. So we've got sharpening here. Again, if I go look at before, you can see how soft it gets there. And then the detail that we have afterwards. Typically, I would never bring something up to 100%. I think a statue might be a different case. But for the most part, I like what it did on auto. And I think I really like the fact that you can mask out the subject that you want. And there are a number of default masks that it understands. It understands a bird. It understands a cat. It obviously understands people. So there are a few dozen subjects that it understands how to determine and mask for you. So you don't necessarily have to go in there and brush in your mask every time. But that option is there if you want to. All right, so let me cancel this. We'll take a look at one more image. All right, so I chose this image because it has a lot of detail. This is the ceiling at the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. So let me choose a view as far as a zoom level. Sorry. I'm going to go ahead into 200%. And you can see a lot of detail over here. And... I don't want to mask anything on this. Everything in here I want to show in some form of detail. And you can tell that it's determined this is one that it needs to sharpen. It's not a matter of focus. It's not a matter of stabilization. The AI is saying sharpen. And it's actually chosen a very small amount of sharpness. So let's go ahead and update this. All right, now we've got our result. And man, what a difference. Let me show you before and after. To me, it seems like it's a little bit brighter. I'm going to go ahead and see what happens if we pull this up roughly about halfway and hit update. And we've got a result. So let's take a look at before and after. So you can see particularly like along here and actually anywhere because there is a lot of detail in this image. Let me take a look at before and after. And it just brings it right out. In most cases, I think sharpness works best somewhere in 20, 25, maybe 30. I've got very few rare occasions where I would bring it up beyond that. And particularly like the last one where I brought it up to 100, I think was a rare case with a statue because there was no other detail really for you to take a look at other than where the highlights and shadows fell. In this case, I think I'm at 60. I think that's too much. I think this is going just a little bit beyond, but it also depends upon your application. This is a photo that I've actually had people contact me because they want to print this off and put it on a ceiling in some of their office buildings. So it's just a matter of what is your purpose, where are you going to share it, and how much sharpening do you need? I like the fact that the tool allows sharpness kind of beyond what I would typically need because there may be some different use cases where you're going to expand this tool, perhaps using uh, the Topaz tools to enlarge it, and maybe you need that level of sharpness and detail in there. The thing is, the more you add sharpness, the more you possibly can add noise, which is why you have noise suppression in here. I think overall they've thought it very well. I have not found a reason why I need to add grain yet. And, you know, maybe that's just me. Maybe it depends upon the subject. But overall, I am really happy with Topaz Sharpen. Just a reminder, as I said, this is resource intensive. On my older computer, I am sitting here waiting. If I am at 100% zoom, I would say that counting from zero to 100%, it's taking about two seconds per percentage point. So you can add up the math. And so for 100%, that's going to take you about 200 seconds. Not the end of the world, but if you're used to instant results, this is not a tool that just gives you instant results. The more you're zoomed in, the more it can concentrate on what it's going to show you, the faster 
you get your uh, update preview. And if you've got a faster, more modern computer, I think that it works just fine. As I've said, I've seen this on other computers, and it doesn't really take quite so long. But on an older computer, this is a 2014 iMac with an Intel Core i5. Not the strongest processor in the world. And it's just simply going to take some time for it to run through. So it's part of the utility bundle, I think, with Topaz. If this is interesting to you, I've got a coupon code for you. You can use WBeam Photo. I'll put this in the link down below. And that'll save you 15% if you decide that you want to buy Topaz Sharpen AI or any of the other Topaz tools. So 15% is actually, I think, a pretty good discount these days. And that might save you a little bit of money if this is something that you find interesting. So of these tools, the Sharpen, Stabilize, Focus, which ones do you think are most likely to in your photography? I'd love to know what you think and give me your impressions of this software. Okay, so that's a wrap on my review of Topaz Sharpen AI. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the like button. Share it with a friend if you think they'll like it. Subscribe if you want to see more information on post-processing tools and other photography topics. And please click the bell notification icon. That'll give you notice the next time I come out with a video. Thank you so much. We'll see you again in the next one.